Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and we're going to continue on with my quadratic formula. So right now we have it so that we're printing the um, text information to the screen, the results of the quadratic formula's uh, investigation. And so I want to make sure that we get the discriminant uh, involved here. In other words, the same way we printed to the just the shell, we checked to see what the discriminant was before we printed results for or even calculated the x-intercepts. Um, so we need to do something similar if we're going to print to the screen where we, um, if we have a result that is discriminant is less than zero, we want to print something other than the x-intercepts r, et cetera, x1, x2 that we did down here. So let's take this part of the equation. Let's make some room here. And we're going to say if d discriminant is less than zero if the discriminant is less than zero colon and now we're going to give a specific instruction very similar to before we're going to blit fact on that same idea let's do what we've done before and take the working blit that we've got going on blit as in the way we're displaying the variable with the text string to the screen so i'm going to copy the working one Paste it in, nudge over everything. Remember, Python does not use syntax, but it uses the outline. Well, I shouldn't say uses syntax, but it uses a lot less syntax than most programs, as long as you outline everything carefully to be nested inside where it needs to be. For instance, if the discriminant is less than zero, the next things that are outlined are going to be the instruction in this case, if this is true. So, uh, you know what, I'm going to leave the variable names the same. It'll prevent problems like you saw in the last video where I got confused on or forget, forgetful on changing all the attributes carefully or all the reassigning carefully. So we're going to leave that part the same, the x-intercept variables, just a name. So we're going to change this that says there are no x-intercepts, simply like that. There are no x-intercepts. The discriminant, well, in fact, on the next line, let's delete all, everything it, down to the quote and just leave it like that. So we're going to keep it also the blue color here. So we're going to simply say there, there, there are, there are no x-intercepts. So there we go. We've got that part done. We need to blit it in the same exact location as if it was, if it were to have x-intercepts. Uh, the instructions now should not be about plotting. The instructions should not be about plotting. In fact, we're going to say what the discriminant is here so that they have more knowledge in this case. The discriminant, discriminant spelling, I hope I got that right. I always have trouble with that one. The discriminant is and now i'll use the adding on string variable trick so i'm going to add on the string of d d lowercase d i'm pretty sure we use the lowercase d sometimes use an uppercase d i just want to double check yes lowercase d and check the global the global is also a lowercase d so that when we are we calculate the d here we basically are passing it by making it global from one function to the next I have in past used the passing of variables through the parentheses here. Uh, we're going to keep this as simple as possible on the beginner nature of programming. And it comes down here and it actually will check that D and then display that D on this part of the instructions. Um, everything else should be the same because the location of a X, Y is the same place it was if it was if we were to have an X intercepts and the discriminant was above zero. On that note, that's where the else comes in. Else in programming is if this is true, great. If it's not true, this is the else part of it. So else do these instructions, and I'm simply going to highlight my x-intercept instructions. If you hit the tab bar, it should tab everything over to make that very quick and easy editing. Um, I'm just going to now organize it and get it in a lovely outline form. In fact, I'm going to add a space here so that I can see that the next instruction is spaced down. I think I'll organize this part as well. All right, might as well do the same up here so we can see each one of the instructions clearly. Okay, sim line, vertex, checking the discriminant. 
Um, last one is just asking if you want to graph another equation. So I think everything is working well. Cross our fingers as always with programming. Hopefully we don't freeze things like we had earlier. One, three, uh, one, and this should be my x-intercepts. This should give me x-intercepts. If you haven't followed along and caught the little trend here, or the correlation, have you noticed that every time I put in positive a, b, and c values, I get negative x-intercepts? As I tell my students, we want to recognize that. Um, if I was to make zero out of this equation, in other words, y would end up zero giving us x-intercepts, the what x makes zero answer has to be negative to make that work. So just something I'd like you to catch as we're programming along on the mathematical side to help build that foundation. Let's test a discriminant that is less than zero. So I need a parabola that has no x-intercepts. If I run this again, oh, I should have hit the N key. I have to come back and run it again. Okay. Um, for fun, let's put in same 131 and now hit the N key. Hit the N key. Back in the background, it doesn't pop up the shell uh, over the window we have, but it is running in the background. Let's put in a 1, 1, 1. This should be a no x intercept situation. Hit return on the last one, and sure enough, we have a graph that has no x intercepts. And it says there are no x intercepts here, and the discriminant is negative 3. And this is working out really well. So let's get it to, let's actually plot the vertex point and the x-intercepts. This is more of uh, practicing your foundation of knowledge with the mathematics involved here, the, the algebra involved here. Um, so that's one reason I want to do that. I'm going to close the shell here and open up a new shell so you can see the actions better. And, oh, i got to close the window first. There we go. Close that program. Okay, hit OK. There we go. I'm going to run a new shell here. And the so the reasons I want to actually plot this is because I want it to be um, like a, maybe for instance, an iPad or some other tablet or other application for your computer um, that is like an instruction device or a tool. I've seen lots of applications that have solve quadratic formula equations and some of them even graph. And so that's what we're basically creating is a fully functional um, tool that has everything, including the plotting. Um, on the standpoint of somebody who's got this experience, we're now hopefully building a foundation of even understanding the quadratic formula and all the attributes a little bit better. So I have several reasons for like to teaching this in my uh, math class. I hope you're enjoying learning it as well. So right now we're going to do the plotting. Um, let's see. Down here we have created two key down functions, hitting the S key drew the symmetry line. So what I'd like to do is basically copy this, these two lines. I'm going to copy these two lines. Again, I haven't made any typos with them, so I prefer to use something I haven't had any typos with, and that way I, I guess I'm making the program run a little bit better. If you notice, I'm being very diligent about lining it up carefully. I want to make sure the outline form is lined up carefully. Okay, the first thing we need to plot is, let's see, the vertex point, the vertex point. So that's going to be drawing a circle here. Um, I believe we said select the V key. So the V key, when the V key is called out, that's what this is waiting for. This is an infinite loop that just sits and waits for you to hit a keyboard or move a mouse and click on something. And we put the commands for those events here. We're not going to say draw line. We're going to say draw circle to the screen. Oh, what color did we have that? It was uh, started off with R, so I believe we want to make it 0, 200 in the middle. That was what we did above so that we have matching colors. When you're drawing a circle, you simply need to give it one XY location, unlike the line. The line needs two XY locations to draw from point to point. Circle needs one XY location. So this should give us the perfect X vertex. What we need is the y-coordinate of the vertex, the y-coordinate of the vertex. And so we're going to plot it very similar by using the height 
divided by two is the starting point so that it knows that it's sitting at the middle height. And then we're going to, uh, let's see, in this case, we have to subtract instead of add like we did over here with the X coordinate. And that's because the height runs backwards. It gets bigger as it goes down. And when we're plotting, we're plotting as if it gets bigger as it goes up. And so we have an opposite action here. And we're going to take, uh, let's see, the vertex X, and I believe we called it the VY up above. We'll make sure we've globalized it. Obviously, we need to multiply it by the K pixels to get it in the right location. Over here now, we just need to delete the extra and give it a, width, uh, a, um, a radius. And I think I'll keep the radius 4. And I believe that's all we need for this. So this will have, if we put a V, we should get the loc the um, a circle drawn as if it was graphing a point right on the vertex. I'm just going to come up and make sure I did globalize the VY. And I did run the program. Let's see how it works. Save it. Uh, Any one, let's do a one. Oh, excuse me, I had to get my cursor down here for some reason. One, three, one, and the x-intercepts are there. Let's click on the V, and the V did plot perfectly the uh, vertex location. Let's hit the S to see the symmetry line go through it. You can see the symmetry line's a little bit too thick, and it's not exactly centered. If I had more time, I would actually get a little more creative in my code and balance the actual the idea that there's a width on the line we're graphing to be dead center on the parabola. But I'm not trying to be that particular for this moment. Um, let's test this just anywhere else. Let's hit an N for new graph. Come back to the back. And let's do a negative number here in the middle so that we'll get a shift to the right most likely. And we do. And let's hit a V. And we can see it's plot. All right. Close this. We do get an error on closing. I do notice that. And I wanted to make sure that you realize I noticed that. And it basically comes when it tries to update the screen. It's a very common error when you're developing in Pygame. I've managed to keep that at bay except for whenever we run a new graph. And for whatever reason, I have not been able to solve that problem. It doesn't hurt the functionality of it. It just does cause a little error upon closing. I don't want you to worry about that. Let's now plot XY coordinates, and I do want to thin out that symmetry line a bit. So coming back down here, what was that symmetry line graphed at? Down here, hit the S key, and what was the width on the symmetry line? Let's make that one 3, so it's a bit thinner than the, than the um, circle graphed at 4 pixels radius. All right, same idea. We need to graph the x-intercepts, but it needs to be in an if statement. This needs to be in an if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by, um, um, let's see, if the key is selected. So we're going to start the same way. In fact, we're going to copy the line that, I'm work that works well here, Okay, the um, if v line, paste it in. A little bit off the screen here. Let's see if I can scroll it back and see everything. All right, line it up. This time, let's see if we hit the X, if we hit the X key, if we hit the X key, basically inside this, we only want to graph it if the D is not less than zero, if the D is not less than zero. So we only want to have an action if the discriminant is basically greater or equal to zero. So to do this, what we're going to do then is we're going to say if D is less than zero, okay, and run it very similar to the if statement we had above. Um, if somebody actually tries to plot this, if somebody actually tries to plot this, we're going to simply reassign, reassign the blit instruction up above. Um, that was done before and remind them that we have a discriminant that is not the right size. So I'm going to, that excuse me, that does not give us an x-intercept. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to see, and this is kind of just to emphasize the point that's already been made above. And so to do that, what I'll do is I'll blit it with a little bit of a, a different color. So I might actually, let's make this a red color and to remind them. So it totally changes the value. 
Um, let's do a, uh, I don't know, about a 250, just a slightly different red that's above there. And just to remind them, hey, the discriminant is not uh, appropriate for graphing the x-intercepts, but the else statement, the else statement should graph the plot. In fact, two plots. So we're going to have two circle plots here. And we're going to plot them not at the vx. We're going to plot them at the x1. And remember, it's always comma zero, comma zero, four pixels big. So we're going to take the x1, multiply it out from the width divided uh, by two to so get us centered, and then multiplied by the k pixels. And let's see, what color do we want these? These should be in blue. So I'm going to make that 200 there and make it zero in the middle. So we got RGB, the last number being blue. Simply copy this line. Copy this line, paste this line, and uh, let's see. Let's make it uh, X2 there, X2, and that should be the only thing that's different. Save, run. In fact, I'll just run it. It'll automatically save. It'll ask me to save. Uh, it's off the screen here, but it is asking me about uh, my A, Bs, and Cs for my parabola. Let's try plotting some things. Let's see. If I plot the sim line, I get it. If I plot V, click on V, I get the vertex plotted. If I hit X, oh, looks like I did an error somewhere. I actually see the two blue dots are perfect X locations, but are not lined up correctly um, on the heights. I don't think I was careful in the plotting of the heights. Let's back up, close the program, take a look. Let's double check the heights. Uh, well, zero makes a lot of sense if we're on an XY grid because the XY plots are zero. So if we're displaying, that made total sense. But we want to do is we want to start at the height divided by two, which is the set, the zero of the XY grid we've set up. So we don't need the value zero. We simply need height divided by two which should put us right. It's spelling right there. Don't want to cause an error in my last little correction here. And it should, it should give us the height correct. Uh, run the program. I notice that my time is over 15 minutes. I'm sorry to be going long here, but we'll see how this goes. All right, hit X. And we get the plots just about perfect. Just about perfect. And if I run a different program and I get... Um, oh, I should have just hit in. I get... I forgot about hitting in. It's off the screen. Oh, let's hit in again. And let's now run what I'm testing is a discriminant that is not, uh, that has um, a discriminant less than three. So let's see if I hit X, just forgetting that I've tried to, that if forgetting there are no X intercepts to plot, um, it did change the color to try to emphasize it. Um, Technically, there is another part I'd like to plot. I'd like to plot the y-intercept. I'd like to plot the y-intercept. I am going to leave that to you. I'm going to leave that to the viewer as a project. There's the teacher in me. I can't help myself. So um, to me, a final project here, a, a final product here should have the y-intercept and possibly, and actually, over here would be the symmetry point, as we call it in advanced algebra and in mathematics. So the symmetry uh, point should be plotted. So um, I leave that to the viewer. Uh, try to do that. See if you can copy and paste the ones that are working. Nudge everything down. And I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope you're enjoying this. And uh, please subscribe to my web uh, to my YouTube uh, uh, collection of videos if you like what we've been doing. Because I hope to add a bunch more. Thank you.